Hello friends. Today we will be discussing about web based learning. In this presentation, we will try to understand the meaning of web based learning, different tools of web based learning, the synchronous and asynchronous mode of learning, and advantages and disadvantages of web based learning. Let's get started. The concept of web based learning starts with distance learning. When the individual stops his formal education, by going to the school or college, does it mean that he cannot learn further? No, we can always learn new things with the help of different courses like distance or open courses. These are offered by open universities and we can continue our learning with the help of those courses. Now as we have got technology in our hand, the technology is always there to help you learn. Therefore. We have come up with the concept of web based learning. It comprises of three words web based learning. It is a subset of e learning. Web based learning is often called as online learning or e learning. What is e learning? E learning is electronic learning, and when we learn with the help of websites, it is e learning only. It includes online course content. There are different discussion forums like emails, video conferencing, live lectures, etc., to which we learn. Web based courses may also provide some static pages and some printed materials as well. Now, there are different terminologies which are often used when we talk about web based learning. The first one is e conferencing. Now, with the help of different apps like Zoom and Google Meet, we e we do e-conferencing, e-learning that is electronic learning, different electronic devices are used for learning like we make use of computers, laptops, palm tops, etc. The third is HTML that is hypertext markup language. It's a language used for programming and when the web pages are created, they are created with the help of HTML language. Hyperlinks. Usually, these are the blue links that we see when we operate on different web pages. They take you from one page to other and that's why called as hyperlinks. Next is internet. It's a very very common term. I don't need to explain you what is internet. Without internet, we will be handicapped now. Next term is ISP, Internet Service Provider. To access to the internet, we have to have some ISP or Internet Service Provider. Then there is intranet. There are computers in an institution which are connected with each other. It is called as intranet, a network of computers that share information within an organization. Next is MLE, Managed Learning Environment. There are different terms which are related to or associated with MLE, like learning management system, etc. Now here Everything that is related to learning is stored. All the records are stored here. There are different search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo. These are the search engines which you use to find information. Video streaming. What is video streaming? We know very well when we are on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Video streaming is done where videos are transferred from one place to another with help of internet. Virtual learning environment. What is a virtual learning environment? It's an environment which is created with the help of electronic devices where the teachers and students are not actually in a four wall classroom but still they are together using the internet. And of course, www that is World Wide Web that is internet. Now, what are the various features of web based course? A web based course starts with the course information. The learners must know what is the course about. There has to be a notice board, a timetable, a curriculum map which will tell you the outline of the course. Then it has teaching materials such as slides, handouts, articles, video documents, word documents, maybe videos, different things will be provided in the form of a teaching material. All these teaching materials are e-learning resources. Then we also have communication. 
This communication can be done via email or discussion forums which are available in different LMSs. We also have formative and summative assessment. Now since the learning is web based, we as a teacher always have to keep a track whether the students are learning or not. And for that we have to have formative assessment. Formative assessment helps us to understand whether whatever teaching material that we have provided through our website to the students is being learned properly by the students or not. Summative assessment helps us to give grades, scores and certification. We also have student management tools. These include different records, statistics related to students, student tracking, etc. When you are using a LMS like Moodle, we understand whether the students have accessed the website or not, whether they have opened the course content or not, how much time they have utilized on Moodle, all these are the student records and with the help of these students record, we can manage students learning, we can track students learning. We also have links to useful internal and external websites related to our topic. The content is available online as well, on other websites as well. And therefore, we have some internal and external websites links which are provided in the web-based course. Let us try to understand the concept of synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. When we talk about web-based learning, we include both synchronous as well as asynchronous learning. What is synchronous learning? Synchronous learning is when classes occur on set schedules and time frames. Students and instructors are online at the same time in synchronous classes. Like we can see that most of the class schools have organized or they have arranged for Zoom classes for the students where the teachers and students are online at a particular time. You get a link which you have to click to get connected to your teacher with the help of Zoom app or maybe Hangout Meet, Google Meet or Webex. These are different tools with which the teacher and the students are online at the same time and they are having live interactions and this is called as synchronous learning. Then what is asynchronous learning? Asynchronous classes let students complete their work on their own time. Students are given a time frame. Within 24 hours, we are supposed to see those modules, see those presentations or go through these YouTube videos and complete one phase. This is what is like, this, this is what is given to the students to complete and therefore it is called as asynchronous learning. What are the tools used for synchronous learning? Usually chat, voice over protocols video or web conferencing or live streaming is done for synchronous learning. Whereas for asynchronous learning, we have digital curriculum material, we have emails, we have discussion forums or boards and social networking which is being used. Wikis, collaborative documents can be used in both synchronous as well as asynchronous mode. Students can work on collaborative documents, on spreadsheets or slides at the same time or they can work at different times as well. So that is what is synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. Now web-based learning has got combination of both synchronous learning and asynchronous learning. It is not that all the students will be able to attend the live sessions and for them we have to provide them some material in the form of say maybe YouTube videos or other documents which they will be able to see at their own pace. So, a combination of both synchronous and asynchronous mode is used in web-based learning. Then, there are some questions which we must ask before starting a web-based learning project. What is educational purpose? What added value will online course will give to the student? What are the resources that we are providing? Huh? Has the project taken account of existing teaching resources? Have you allowed, allowed enough time to develop and redevelop the material? All these questions must be thought about before developing the web-based.
this learning project. What are the advantages of web-based learning? Here, the ability to link resources in many different formats. We can give the learning resources in different formats. We can also provide materials for catering diverse needs of the learner. It can be an effective way of delivering course material. It can encourage more independent and active learning. Students can learn at their own pace on their own. It can provide useful resource. It can provide a useful source of supplementary materials to the conventional program. Along with that, there are some limitations to the the first limitation is access to appropriate computer equipment may be a problem for some students. Learners at times find it frustrating if they cannot access graphics, images, video clips, etc. because of the poor equipment. The necessary infrastructure must be available for everyone and it should be affordable also. Information can vary in quality and accuracy. The kind of web-based learning material that I may develop may be different from someone else and students can feel isolated. They will not get the feeling of being together in the class. The social interactions will not be there. The rapport developed with the teacher, with the other students is missing in web-based learning. Anyways, in today's scenario, web-based learning is a very very important tool for teachers and students. When the students and teachers cannot come together in a class, we have to design web-based program. Thank you.